Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, our text in Deuteronomy is um, it's incredibly important because it tells us about God. It tells us about us. Uh, and yet it's a text that, you know, we could read it, and it's been read on this Sunday every three years in Epiphany, and yet it probably doesn't even sound familiar much of the time because it doesn't get a lot of play outside of this Sunday in Epiphany. So we'll go through it and see again some amazingly important things about us and about God and some, I'll say, New Testament parallels. It starts out uh, with Moses speaking. And Moses says, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. So the very first verse, verse 15, uh, Moses identifies himself as a prophet. And then as we go through the text, we have the transition then with God speaking. And God says, I will raise up for them, the people of Israel, a prophet like you. And so Moses is seen as a prophet by God. So that begs the question then, uh, the ongoing question about what is a prophet. In modern parlance, a prophet is somebody that foretells the future. And a lot of people will, will take today's meaning and sort of take it backwards, you know, 3,000 years to the Bible and make a biblical prophet a person that foretells the future. But obviously, if we look at Moses and we see that Moses identifies himself as a prophet, God identifies Moses as a prophet. So, okay, to what extent did Moses foretell the future? Well, not at all. But what Moses does and what we are called to do is to proclaim God's word to the world, remembering that epiphany means making God known, God made manifest. And so Moses doesn't foretell the future at all, but Moses is a prophet. Moses is the model prophet of the Old Testament and the model prophet for people like us today, God's people of all times. Because again, what does Moses do? What is his function? Yes, he brings the law down from Mount Sinai, so he is taking the word of God and giving it to the people so the people know who God is, what God wants, uh, what God, let's say, the, the values of God for the sake of God's people. And that's all it is. Moses prophets mediate God's word to the people. And that's exactly what Moses does in his long sort of career, let's say, as a prophet. So Moses understands himself to be a prophet. Moses understands himself to be the one who's God's messenger to the people. And then we, we come across then the second fairly important aspect here, um, especially for us today, is that we see that Moses and God promise another prophet. It's interesting to me that, you know, Moses says, if I hear the voice of the Lord my God anymore, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. He's talking about his experience in Mount Sinai. And he does not want to have to relive that experience again. And God says, you know, you're right, Moses, and that's not going to happen again because I'm going to get a prophet. I'm going to send prophets, somebody like you, uh, to the people. And that promise from God isn't just for the people uh, of Moses' time, but it's for God's people of all time. So we hear God saying that I'm going to send a prophet. And Moses promises the people that, you know, God will send a prophet, somebody to tell us God's word. Think about the New Testament. Uh, and I guess it's Pentecost Sunday when Jesus is, is getting ready to leave. And he promises the people that, you know, you'll receive the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the advocate, um, and it becomes the same thing. The people are afraid with 
that Jesus in his absence, that things might fall apart for them, for all the people of God. And Jesus promises, as Moses promises, that God is not going to leave them, but God is going to send, again, the Holy Spirit. So we have the promise of God in Deuteronomy that I'm not leaving you. You will hear my word, just not in fire and thunder and lightning, but you'll hear my word through the prophets, the prophets that I choose and who I send to you. So for succeeding generations, the people after Moses, the people moving into the promised land and so forth, they have the promise that God and God's word is still with them. And Jesus promises his followers that in my absence, God will send another, you know, what we call the Holy Spirit, uh, to be with you, to guide you, to uh, tell you God's word, you know, during that time. So these are all words that are easy to say. It would have been easy for Moses to say, yeah, God's going to send another prophet like me. And it would be easy for Jesus to say, God is going to send you a Holy Spirit. But that doesn't answer or cover all the questions that come up. Uh, and the first and foremost for the prophets are, how do we know, you know, not Moses speaking, but the people speaking, how do we know that this is a real prophet, a prophet sent by God? And the people listening to Jesus, how will we know that something that we think about, something that we're, we're you know, working on, how do we know that that's from the Spirit and not from something else? the story about Martin Luther on his way back to law school and he gets knocked off of his horse by a, a thunderbolt, a lightning bolt, sorry. And he, uh, evidently he, he says that when he's knocked off his horse, he said, oh, good heavens, I'm not going to go to law school. I'm going to become a monk. And Luther relates this story to his father and his father responds, not to Luther, I don't think to Luther, but his father at least thought, well, I hope that wasn't the devil. And so we have an event in Luther's life and the same concern for how do we know that that was God speaking to Luther and from his dad's perspective, how do we know that that wasn't the devil speaking to Luther? Well, in this case, you know, uh, we know from Luther's life that, yeah, that would have been a message from God. But most of us don't have such clear-cut you know, uh, examples before us. Think about the, the bracelets, wristlets that people wear, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Because there's always that question, you know, what would Jesus do? Uh, and we could say the same thing about, you know, is this the Holy Spirit, what I'm, what I'm thinking about, what I'm praying about? Is this coming from the Spirit, or is this maybe just coming from me? And the people in the Old Testament had the prophets, a lot of prophets, and they had the same question. How do we know that this prophet is a real prophet, that this is really the word of God? Well, if we were to read the last two chapters of the text today, verses 21 and 22, um, you know, God says pretty clearly, well, you know a true prophet, you know the real prophet, you know the prophet sent from me, if what they say comes to pass. And so, okay, that makes it a little bit better because throughout the church's history, um, 2,000 years, 2,100 years, and using the people of Israel prior to that and their 1,500 year history, the question is always the same. What is truly from God and what isn't? And the only answer we have is if, well, what the person says comes true, uh, if it has other verifications, uh, then, then you know that it is from God. So this morning we have the question, the challenge about what is a prophet, but we are also fully aware that when God is speaking about the prophets, God is speaking about us. And just as the prophets told the people around them what God's word was, that is the exact same thing that we've been called to do as well. In this epiphany season, again, God made manifest how is that going to happen if we, the people of God, don't make it happen? 
how can we let the rest of the world know what God is all about, what God wants, about the, the, the promises for the future, if we are not the ones that mediate that word, if we're not the ones like Moses that speak that word from God. And so behind all of this is the realization and the promise that we see here, that we see with Jesus, and that is that God doesn't leave God's people alone under any circumstance. Uh, we see here, you know, probably 3,600 years ago, and then we see in Jesus 2,100 years ago, that very same concept of God being present in the world. Today, we call it the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit. And we, in our own ways, try to discern and how many times have we asked what is God's will for each of us? And how do we understand that? And how do we know that? And oftentimes it takes kind of a lot of years to, before we realize, yeah, that, that really is what this was all about. So this epiphany and the challenge of Deuteronomy, the challenge of realizing that, that we have been called to be God's spokespeople, God's messengers, God's prophets, in our world today to make God known and the realization that, that God is present with us in all situations at all times, uh, that God is present with us as we, in our ways, try to make God known to the rest of the world. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.